everyone. It's Rhonda Gilbert, or Lady Rose as you may know me, here today to do a little bit of a junk journal project. Now, I've tried taping this one other time, but I realized I was not fully in frame. So I'm hoping that I will be fully in frame this time so you can see what I'm doing. So what I am going to show you how to make are uh, basically little like envelopes that you can put into your junk journal or that you can uh, either glue or tuck into your junk journal, whatever you want to do kind of thing. But this was a kind of a neat project. I, I got the inspiration from Craft With Me, and I know the woman's name is Edith, and she has a lovely southern accent that is just delightful to listen to. Um, so I love listening to her um, stories and her, her goings-ons while she talks about the crafts that she's doing for her junk journals. So what she had done is she had taken postcards and made the postcards into... Um, these little kind of envelopes. Now I don't know if she was using um, six by six sheets, but what I have here is I've been taking pages out of books, in particular this uh, flower book that I found. So it's underneath here, but this is the cover, Flowers of the World. I found it at a thrift store and I was just like, oh yes, I must have it. And this is just, like I said, the jacket for that book. I'll show you the book in a minute. Um, oops, sorry, didn't mean to knock you there. But uh, when I was watching Craft With Me do this, um, I was like, oh, I can pick out some beautiful flowers. As you can see, I've got one here and it opens up nicely. And then another one here. And another thing that it uses up is a lot of this six by six uh, stock paper or cardstock paper that's uh, used for scrapbooking and junk journaling. Now the thing in junk, junk journaling world is that oftentimes we're always trying to come up with different things to do with the six by six paper because there's lots of great patterns out there um, as far as you know like the pink polka dots and uh, flowers and roses and things like that but it's not a big enough piece of paper to really do something with. It's not like the 12 by 12 with the big books that you get of uh, scrapbooking paper. So we're always looking for things to do because even if you're folding it, like you can make a little bag with it, like a pocket pouch like that. I think I did a video on that. Um, but it's still a fairly small size. And even if you fold it up, it's still a fairly small kind of pocket. So what can we do with this stuff? So this is one way to use this kind of paper because you'll find that you buy, if you get into scrapbooking or junk journaling, you'll find you buy a lot of six by six. It's more, um, it, it's pl more plentiful as well it's super well priced so sometimes it's hard to resist the deal of oh i can buy this for you know two bucks or three bucks or whatever as opposed to the bigger uh scrapbooking pads which can run you into like 15 20 25 30 35 i've even seen dollars for that pad so it's a bit more of an investment so for whatever reason you, you seem to end up with a lot of six by sixes and you're not always sure what you can do with them so I'm going to show you something to do with them and we're going to make some fun little envelope pockets that you can do. So when you've got them done, like I said, you can put whatever you want in here obviously and you can tuck it into your journal in a tuck spot or into a, another pocket or whatever or you can make this the pocket itself. You could glue along here and put that in and you'd have a back pocket as well as this front pocket or you could glue the whole thing down on all four sides here and just have that pocket and you kind of have to lift it up to kind of see what's inside and all that kind of stuff or you could leave it lifted up if you want um so let's see what we're going to make um so this is my scrap paper that i use to glue and color and cut on but this is actually the um book the flowers of the world book it's super heavy it's got, I've already ripped a lot of pages out of it because I've been doing a lot of different crafts with it um, and different projects, which I'll be showing you as well. But here are some of the flowers. So I'm going to try and find um, a good set of 
you know, flowers or whatever to do for this, for these ones. Because really what you're looking for is something along the bottom of the page or along the top of the page. And then of course, always check on the other side to see if there's anything that maybe you want to keep. Like this isn't bad here. Um, and of course, the it's not going to take up everything. So I do like the thing on the back of it but it's not really going to impede on the thing in the back. So maybe we've already found our thing. But just to kind of flip through and see what else is in this book. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. I think, if I remember correctly, I've since ripped the page out, but I believe it was published in the 1960s at some point. So yeah, beautiful book, lots of beautiful illustrations. Um, and like not pictures of flowers, but illustrations. And that is like a junk journals, you know, holy grail kind of thing. It, it's just so lovely to find that. And I got it at a thrift store. It's one of the best places to get some of these kind of books. So I'm ripping this page out and I'm gonna use this one. So, oh, I don't have to move that. I just have to move this back over. So. This is just to cover up, you know, in case there's glue or something that goes flying. So I like to keep all my tools in their home handy right by me because I am working in a very small space. And like my kitchen is a very small space as well, I tend to be a cook and a crafter that cleans as she goes for the most part. Um, you know, not everything gets picked up, but a lot of things do. And um, there we go, beautiful. So I'm gonna cut this here. So I tend to like to put things back even if I know I'm gonna get it out again. So even though I know I'm gonna get the scissors out again, I put it back in its home so that I'm not doing this, <laughs> searching for things as I <laughs> am crafting. Now what would go well with this? Well, that might go okay. Let me just see here. Doesn't have to match perfectly, but I think I'll do the polka dots. So you're gonna take your craft, or your scrapbook paper, I mean, and I'm not a big one for like exact measurements or anything. I like to kinda eyeball things, so not everything works out perfectly, and I'm okay with that. Um, so yeah, so this is probably gonna be one of the main focuses, so I'm not gonna fold there, but I will see how far we get. So it's gonna cut some of this off, but that's okay. We're gonna make it a little smoother maybe. So I'm gonna cut this off so I have this, and I'm gonna make this into a little journal card then. For my last one, I have this left over, which I'm gonna then hard back, put some cardstock on, and th these will both be nice little journal cards that will fit into our new envelope. So this is the other side. Now some of this came off and that's okay because I'm going to fold this anyways. Um, no, I'm not going to fold this. I'm going to fold the bottom. Yeah, I think I'll fold the bottom. So you want to fold one side. You could do the side. You could do, and you could just do one side as well, or you can do the bottom. But I'm going to do the bottom here. Is that going to be enough? Yes. So I'm doing the bottom because basically what this does is it helps to create a little bit more of a pocket for this. What, I could do it just straight flat down if I wanted to, but I find when you do that, then it, it, it tends to make the thing very tight and you can barely get things in there. Whereas if you just have that little bit sealed over or folded over, I mean, then it's not, it has a little bit of air there and it can hold a little bit more. So because I cut it where that yellow flower is, because I wanted to save that, it's a little short here, which is fine. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the cardstock down a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is go gonna just come up one side of it because if I do both sides, <laughs> I'll probably have two crooked sides. <laughs> when I only do one side, I only have one crooked side. <laughs> So we'll see how this goes. Doo, doo, doo. 
just came back from lunch with a friend of mine. Things are opening up again because COVID is getting under control, thank goodness. At least we hope. And it was so nice to connect with her on this beautiful sunny day in Kingston, Ontario. So there we go, now it's matching, okay? So now what we're gonna do is I'm going to fold this down a little bit just to make some lines here. So you basically want this to be able to meet this. You don't need it overlapping too, too much, but a little bit. And now because it has lines of circles, I can line things up a little better. <laughs> oh, don't ask me to ever cut your hair. <laughs> and my surgery days I know are over, so you know, that's not gonna happen again. So I got out my bone fo folder and I'm pressing, folding this down. I'm gonna do the same thing with this, just to, get it a crisper, cleaner kind of edge and so it knows where it's folded. This is one of the best tools that you can get for um, junk journaling. I'll put a link below to my Amazon store. I also actually sell them on my Etsy shop as well. I think they might be a little cheaper on my Etsy shop, but I think they're free shipping on my Etsy. Amazon store, but not free on my Etsy. So it kind of works out to six of one, half dozen of another kind of thing. So whichever way you want to go, but I'll put links for both. Um, but yeah, most um, of these bone folders also come with this one. And this is great for like any little spots that you want to do. They're great for smoothing glue. You're going to see me using these again when I'm smoothing down the glue. Um, but again, this needs a home because the minute I put it down here, it blends too well into the white. So I'm, uh, until I trained myself to put things back in their home, um, this got lost a lot. I almost threw this out one time because it was in amongst a bunch of white papers and I, I didn't see it. And I was like, oh no, where'd it go? So that's a great, great tool. And this is my latest toy. I love this toy. So this toy, you can do a bunch of things. Like you could... Uh, cut out full circles, see like that? And you can make circles, like you can get fancy paper and make circles, or you can put circles into paper, whichever way you wanna do it. But one of the main ways I use this is I go in half, right? Move it down a bit, I think. Okay, so now I've created a little tab. And what I found so now when I make pockets or these envelopes, there's a little thing like this. Where's a pocket? Do I have a pocket around? I'm not sure if I do. I don't think I do, but if I did, there you can see this a lot better. Even if I've stacked a bunch of pockets together, you'll be able to see where there is a pocket. So I love this. I think it just adds a lovely little um, detail that not all pockets will have. And then I'm going to age this part before I glue it on. Because if I glue it on and then want to age it, I'm kind of like, I can't get at the edge because now this is glued on and I'm sort of tearing it up, right? So this, this is another great little tool. I found this, like a lot of people use these dabber things. Um, Tim Holtz, I know, has one that's very popular for our distressed ink or oxide ink as it's called so that's um, one of the versions I've got vintage photo which is by far the most popular distress oxide ink and this is what it looks like on the inside mine's very well used so it's not usually quite that <laughs> sort of yucky looking or whatever and as you can see I've been using it because I put the dabber on top a lot while I'm you know in between things but this I found I believe it was a Dollar Tree and you'll eat through sponges fairly quickly the more you do a lot of these. Um, I've also used just plain old makeup sponges, but I find this is way easier, especially if you have any kind of arthritis in your hands, this is definitely a go-to tool. And then like I said, you just bring this up and this helps to age the paper. So, and it's super, super easy to do. Do, do, do. If you haven't already seen this stuff, and Tim Holtz actually has a whole pile of different, I'm gonna just go down the side while I'm talking anyways, um, a whole bunch of different uh, ink colors. Oh, I forgot to cut the edges. Yes, 
So I, I'm trying to train myself to be better about this. So I like rounded edges and I have a round edge rounder coming that is gonna be my new new tool, um, but it probably won't be here till the end of the month. And it will be way faster than doing it by hand like I'm doing now. And for whatever reason, because my stomach's full of food, my body has totally forgotten how to do these. I can usually do them way faster than this, but I'm just full of nachos right now. <laughs> so if I would stop um, and think and do these rounder edges, I won't waste as much ink. Not that you know, you're burning through it or anything, but you know, save yourself some time of trying to get it aged and whatnot. So, and I'm one of these people that I like to know that it's there. I see a lot of um, junk journalist people, I guess we're not journalists, but junk journal people doing this, like just a quick, you know, and you hardly know it's been there, um, or at least it doesn't look like it's been there very much. So um, I, like to, I like to know it's been there, that it's been aged. I like true age um, kind of uh, paper. Um, so I'm going to, uh, use a, just a regular old glue stick. You don't need any fancy extra strong, strong, extra bonding kind of, um, glue for this. As soon as I get this off. Oh, I just finished up a tube. So now I've got to get this one open. Ooh, this one does not want to, oh, there it goes. Okay. So like I said, it's just regular old glue stick. You don't need anything fancy for it. I think this is Dollarama glue stick. So you're gonna glue along where this edge is, and then you're gonna glue this edge and this edge. And you don't necessarily wanna get under here necessarily too much because you wanna keep that air there for when you put your tickets and your card, journal cards and your, your tags and things. As you can see, I cannot walk and chew gu bubble gum at the same time because I had to stop talking just so I could concentrate on getting this on the card. So this is, I've got the bone folder back out again because what this does, even with the cheap glue, is it helps to make the bond faster and better because I'm spreading the glue down and I'm making it go down this like it takes very little effort for such good effort on this like it you know it's been glued now so this is almost finished which is awesome now for my scissors I'm gonna round these edges as well so hopefully this will be a little bit of an inspiration for you to add to your junk journals um, I do custom junk journals as well because some people just, you know, they just want a journal to journal in. They don't want to have to make their own. So totally, totally legit. Um, feel free to message me if you want to do that. I'm going to round these edges as well. I don't always do that, but doing it this time. I cannot wait till my edge rounder comes in. I see all kinds of videos and a lot of the big names sort of thing in the junk journaling world have these corner rounders, which are awesome. But I'm getting pretty good at doing it by hand if I have to. There we go. Okay, and then it's just to put that back home and get my dabber out. And what I like about this, like even Tim Holtz, you kind of have to hold it. But this one, I just crook my finger in it and it's pretty much there. And a lot of times you find that your, your ink will slide around a little bit because a lot of people will just do this and then put it on. I like to get a little bit, so I rub it a little bit. So I get a much darker kind of effect um, happening, but not so dark that it looks weird, just dark enough that it's like, oh yeah, that has been here for a while looks nice and aged by the time I'm done with it. So I'm gonna age this top part here. So I, I tend to like bring it along the edge of the paper 
and then I just go like this on the second time around so you get kind of a bit of a border happening but when you do this along the edges it just darkens that edge so it stands out a little bit more so it's sort of like outlining the edge but you still get like this subtle kind of oh yes it's been here it's been aged so I'm going to do this side as well so that because the envelope wouldn't just have this part aged, right? You kind of got to think about like, what would age in this? <laughs> what would look tattered? What would look worn? So then you just age this up. And sometimes I'll bring just, I won't dab into it, but I'll just bring it across a little bit. So that, because if you dab in and then do that, you're going to get a big brown splotch. Trust me, I've done it many times myself. And when you just, after you've dabbed it and done an edge, and then just brush it along here, you get a very subtle, like, oh yeah, it's it's been aged, but not, you know, ink hasn't been dropped on it. <laughs> now, a lot of people, and especially when I watched Craft With Me, she put um, paper here to decorate it up, so that's an option. I just feel like, eh, I don't wanna be bothered with that, lining it and all that kind of stuff. So what I tend to do is I tend to age in here as well with this ink, but um, I leave room for, you know, I could put an inspirational quote here, or I could put an inspirational word, like I could put believe or strength or something like that. Or I could put like an owl or a butterfly, nice flower, whatever I want kind of thing. So I leave room for that to be able to happen. But I don't leave it stark <laughs> um, white. I do age it a bit so you know that there's been some aging that happens. And then I'm going to go down here again. hope I'm not out of camera. Sometimes I travel when I'm doing this. My ink pad and myself both travel. And you'll find when you get into the junk journal world, um, if you choose to do that and start doing your own journals or whatever, these two things, you're gonna do a lot of aging. <laughs> and then, okay, so I'm gonna do one last edge and then I'm gonna start to bring this across. now. This paper is like cardboard cardstock. This paper is a little more glossy and shiny, so it takes the ink in a different way. So it's always good to kind of experiment. Like if you've got a glossy book that you're taking pages out of, use it on something that you're not creating until you get to know how that paper um, behaves with the ink because otherwise you end up sometimes with like, oh, I didn't know it was gonna do that kind of moments. <laughs> but there's no real wrong thing. It's sometimes in, in junk journal world, sometimes it uh, it's accidental awesomeness. Now the other thing too, when you're using your bone uh, folder to fold down some of these edges and stuff, don't use it until you are committed to that line um, because it will keep it a lot smoother. You probably didn't notice, but I'm going to point it out. See here, that's the first line I committed to with my bone folder, but then I decided I wanted it down a little bit more. So I, I brought it down a little bit more, but now you can see this crease. But I edged it out, aged it out, I mean. So I put some extra ink there. So now it just looks like it's been extra aged. So it's, like I said, there's no real mistakes in junk journaling, just happy accidents, as, as Bob Ross would say. So there I have another little pocket ready to go for any journal that I might be working on. And you do find that you do tend to make stashes of stuff so that uh, you know, you're know you using up some of your supplies and you have some ready to go stuff on those days when you maybe don't have inspiration. So I hope this helped. I hope now you can go and make your own little pocket envelopes for your own junk journals, or you could even make it a nice pocket envelope to hold a little note um, of comfort for a friend or birthday wishes or congratulations or whatever it might be. If you're giving away a gift card, definitely make your own um, envelope. But I also do sell um, some of this eph ephemera on Etsy. I'm getting more and more up there um, in this kind of stuff. So if you want some envelopes or pocket envelopes, let me know 
and I can do a batch up for you. Okay, thank you so much for uh, watching. Please uh, let me know in the comments that you're here and let me know if you'd like to see more junk journaling um, videos from me as well. Okay, take care. Bye.